It's that time of the year again. JavaScript just got a new spec, and this one is actually full of surprisingly useful stuff. One of the biggest additions in the 2025 edition is the new global iterator. JavaScript has always had iterables and iterators, but somehow using them felt worse than programming in Java. But this new object plans to change all that. It lets you wrap existing iterable objects in a new interface that provides functional operators. Thanks to this wrapper, we'll get two big wins. First, the iterable syntax is improved since they finally gain functional operators. Second, these operators are lazy with inline evaluation of elements. Of course, this translates in performance benefits, especially for large collections. This is a step forward compared to the array built-in functional operators, which work by eagerly evaluating the entire array and producing intermediate working arrays at each stage of the operation. On top of that, you can now write the similar lazy chains on generators, and it works exactly the same. Another exciting addition is targeting sets. Sets were added later in the language, and they are not that popular, also because arrays are so flexible and easy to use. However, sets have their own role, offering a guaranteed unique unsorted collection that preserves insertion order and has linear time for getting and removing operations. ECMAScript 2025 comes packed with a few new set methods. They are easy to understand, especially if you've already used them in a language like SQL. Intersection finds common elements in two sets. Difference subtracts the right set from the left one, is subset of checks whether the first set is entirely contained by the second, and is disjoint from, checks whether the two sets are entirely different. A big change with major implications is the new support for JSON modules. This avoids the need to manually import JSON files or use a build step for that purpose. The with keyword points to the module attributes the spec is referring to. Right now, this keyword is used only to specify a module's type as JSON, but import attributes is another proposal which might open the door to more fine-grained control in the future. On the regular expression front, the new escape static method lets you prevent injection attacks on regular expression strings. It will escape any characters with special meaning in a regex context, just like other functions prevent SQL injection on arbitrary SQL strings. But one of the additions I am personally excited about is the new promise try method. This allows us to call functions which may or may not return a promise and ensure the result is always a promise. In other words, it lets you wrap a promise chain in so that any synchronous errors that bubble out will be handled by the chained catch method. So you can skip the extra try block and use your catch to handle both asynchronous and synchronous errors. Finally, JavaScript is continuing its effort to cover the needs of high-performance computing. Float16 Array is a new typed array that stores 16-bit floating-point numbers, which is half the size of the usual 32-bit float, and a quarter of JavaScript's default number, which is always a 64-bit double. This means less memory usage, faster transfer speeds, and just enough precision for things like neural network weights, image data, or any other scenario where you care more about throughput than decimals. If you like this video, you should check out one of these ones next. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel, and until next time, thank you for watching.